folks. Welcome once again to, hey, there's just something about Kansas City, where we have positive conversations about the people, places, and things that make this such a wonderful city to live in. And I couldn't be more honored or humbled than to be sitting across this table from this wonderful lady right across from me. Of course, this is Sonia Roshofsky, and she is... My maiden name, Grinstein. Grinstein, yeah. yes. Uh, I had a spelling of that on here, but I, G-R-Y-N-S-Z-T-E-J-N, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, in Polish. In knowing. Polish, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, Sonia, better known not only nationally, but internationally by her moniker... Her nickname is Big Sonia, Sonia. and yeah. I can't, uh, I just can't tell you how you much of an honor met this Leah. is. You've never met Leah? You've never met Leah. She's the one. It's my granddaughter and her husband are filmmakers, and it's a long story how they started. That's right. That's Leah, and, and Todd Soliday is, is her husband. And yes, they, yes. Eventually, they had to talk you into this because Big Sonia whether you know it or not, is one of the last survivors of the Holocaust. And um, she has been telling her story for years. Yeah, many it, years. It, many. Took, it took her a while to get around to that situation. And somebody wanted her to write a book. And she said, no, because I just think it's more powerful when you talk about it. And so there is a award-winning documentary called Big Sony, you can find it on YouTube. You prime it on Prime Video. You can find it almost anywhere, and it is an incredible journey that you have taken to get where you are right now, sitting across from me. Is just the journey was just incredible from when you were a young girl, all the way through the Holocaust, surviving six years in the camps. In just the ghetto, and yeah, and not, the ghetto not, before not, that. Not all the six years. Because when they came, especially our city was very, very well known all over the world because for the Bristol brushes we made, and they needed us, the Germans. So it became like a transit city. What can I tell you? Yeah, it's unbelievable, you know. If I would have to go on, I'm be too long here. So, okay, I will ask answer shortly okay all right so um take your time we're okay go yeah, ahead okay so as you remember me in the history it's too bad i want to mention to you that uh, they're taking away the history from our young people and this is wrong you can imagine when they came in i was not quite in 14 yet but I was reading history since I was in the fifth grade already. I wrote a poem, you know, in Polish. And uh, our education was on a very high scale. But it was very, we felt a lot of anti Semitism, absolutely. Right. It's, it's too bad to tell you the truth because, you know, you expect the Christian. Religion should be a loving religion. But I'm sorry to tell you, even in school, I was going to the latrine, was on the walls written, Zabi Zida, that means kill the Jew. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't want to go into, uh, you know. And that was before the this war, is, correct? This is before the yes, war. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's this was right. happening yeah. uh, in Europe before the war. Before the war. And then I'll give you an idea what city I come because they would later, first of all, we had first, as you remember, if you read history, that uh, Hitler made a pact with Stalin. We fell in to the Russian side, because really, my city is more on the eastern part. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I hope you know, that Hitler did not have any concentration camps only labor camps, because later in the history he was figuring it was we didn't do it. You know what I mean? Right. So all the the guest chambers, only the crematorias. Yes, he, we had. I was liberated in Bergen Belsen. I'll give you an idea. We had only because it's on the German soil. We were surrounded with thousands and thousands of dead people. They had only one 
you know, crematoria. Right. One crematoria couldn't handle it. Anyway, I could sit still and anyway, what is the next? What well, right. you want the, to know? In, in the, and then the Germans invade, of course, and then, then they, they get then, Poland. Then he changed again with, uh, you know, he was preparing himself to, you know, to fight against Russia, yes. but they didn't know. He hated stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So then he changed the, the, the border, fell in farther to, it was a, a very big uh, um, river book, we call it. The book fell into the main one, Kshna, and Kshnana went in to the, um, uh, what is the, another ocean, what do we have about the Baltic Sea? Okay, right, Baltic. you, uh, you mm-hmm. understand. So, so you can imagine when the Russians came in, we didn't have any problems yet in the beginning. But then, when they had to already leave, they were telling us, You will have a horrible time what's waiting for you. But you know, propaganda always was on. We didn't believe them. Right, you didn't believe A lot them. of people would be, you know, survive. And it's too long to tell you how it was. But anyway, whoever went with the Russians, they were very also smart. You can take if you had a business, you could take everything and they would, you know, put it in the trough. But otherwise, he had a speech, and my father. You know, I think he was more visionary. And after the speech he felt, he came home, I'll never forget, and said to my mama, you know, it's okay. We should go with them. You can only take one piece of luggage, okay? And then whatever, you know, my father was in the business, four and different, different things. Anyway, you know how a woman is... You know, One piece of yes, luggage? Yes. No way. She said, Mo, she said to my father, how can I leave it? Who would dream? Who would dream at that time that guest chambers? Right. Never in the history. You have never sure. We had all kind of horrible things going on. All those ages, you know that. Mm-hmm. But this was the one of the worst. So, so you can imagine. She, she said, Oh, how can I leave my house? And then, okay, so stayed on. And some of them, was well, they went, they went, uh, they survived, and some did not survive because when you went there, you, you know, it was Iron Curtain. You, you yeah. remember? And I, I'll never forget. I had a f- friend from my hometown that he was he survived there, but he was telling me when he came. They put him in a special house, you know, to live with other, you know. So one evening, the fellow said, let's take a, a walk, okay? And he told him, listen, he already worked, he was a tailor too. He said, listen, if you want, even a brother to brother was scared to, you know. He said, I want to tell you, if you want to survive, don't do any complaints, don't say anything. And, he, and it was true. Anybody was complaining about the soup, next day you wouldn't see him anymore. Right, okay, right. I don't know, I'm going into different things. It's okay, Let, let's talk about uh, the, the Germans invade, they invade your town, okay? They come into your city. From my town, okay. Yeah, and then, and then all of a sudden, you now know, after a little while, what is going on and what they're doing and getting a pretty good indication that being Jewish is going to be extremely difficult for us here. We wouldn't dream like this. So finally, you see, another thing. I want you to know, a lot of the army itself, he had a lot of what they were against him in the army. When the army came, they didn't do horrible things on us, no. The only thing I remember when they, when they sang and they had to, this was, you know, how it's, how we are happy to see when the Jewish blood is flowing. Okay. But they didn't do anything bad. You see, then after, matter of fact, till today it was a Hauptmann Huti. It's a long story. He was a very high, high man in the army. 
and they were taking up the font, you know, the big, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was a uh, like a big building, and we were living still in the back. But later on, little by little, they put on the ghetto. But I want you to know, I'll never forget. For some reason, he always brought some shirts. He has a denshtick. He was a very high caliber. I don't know how, Hauptmann. And he was on the first floor. You can imagine, more medals yeah, and war, everything. War, war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he held to his shirts very late. So he said, denshtick means he... The, he was helping, you know, uh, how do you call it in the military, you know, the big people. So he used to bring his shirts for Mama to wash it. We always had extra little bread or something, you know. But I want you to know, when they got an order to go to the East, he knew what Hitler is doing to us. I shall never forget, for history, I want you to know, and he said, Gottenswillen, he came specially himself. And he said, Gottenswillen, you don't know what's waiting for you. I'll never forget. And we looked at him, you know, and still before already they're marching to the fight the Russians, you know, to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the SS came in, they started doing the horrible things. They were the ones that were rounding up uh, the Jewish yes, population and yes. shipping and they, them off. Listen, the killings on the street, there would people, you know, he would sit just for a joy and kicking. You know, anyway, the, so much, the ghetto was just as horrible. Lay, but they did it thing by thing. There was, and finally we realized to to do, so, you know, to get busy with working someplace. Mm -hmm. We felt maybe we'll be able to live, you know, stay longer here. But at that time, we still didn't know about the guest room. Right. It was probably a long time before you ever knew yes. that, right? Yes, and look at here. The Tremblinka, I come from the west, from the eastern part. Remember, please, the eastern part was the deadliest, deadliest part of what Hitler used the deadliest, you know, you heard about Babi Yar, you didn't, and other ones, Tremblinka, oh. and the other, I forgot already, hell no, and I, it's all was to die, you know what I mean? Right, they were all death the crematoriums were in camps. those camps, they were the death the, camps. Yeah. Yeah. If you read the last thing from Tremblinka, how they fought back, you know, they knew already, then you will understand. I don't know really what to. Yeah, talk. no, you, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah. You just, you're, you know, this is your story. You have so many things, incredible yes, yes. memories from back then because you were old enough to. You weren't like two or three or four years old. You're already 11, 12, 13 years old at that point. So your memories are as vivid as a teenager's are these days for when they, you know, is. As they get older, but in, and you survived for a long time. They were hiding, and a lot of your story, to me, almost seemed like Anne Frank, and and their family, where they were hidden behind these false walls. You were hiding in the attic of, of your building in a false no, floor. You no, know, we were hiding. We were in a in a hiding place. Mm -hmm. It's like a bunker, you know. I was there two weeks, and now is a book. You have to read it. It is. Uh, Clara's War, please make a note. Okay. Clara's War, this is the latest. She kept a diary. 18 people survived. From 5,000, I don't, it was a small city, it used to be in Poland, now it's in Russia. Why I say it's a must for everybody to read, they will get it. What the end it's like the SS, what uh -huh. did that too? Right. Horrible things. They want to go to the left, they will know. They have to learn, they don't. If you don't read history, you will not know it. You will repeat yeah. history if you don't look, read yeah. history. From 5,000, I believe, only, only 50 survived. Oh. From my hometown, from 18,000 Jewish people, only 200 survived from the concentration camps. Others survived in Russia, from the, you know, it's a long story, and on maybe in hiding. 
if we would have some our Christians, we say, you know, Poland had a Roman Christian, you see. If they would listen, it's no use. We had a very pope, a very bad pope. <laughs> I don't have to tell. You know, you know, there is a book, Hitler's Pope. Yeah, so you can imagine. Yeah, I've uh, I've you know seen I've seen documentaries on yeah. this. Yes, absolutely. Do you, you know, if you read the book, the last survivor from Bobby Yar, it tells you, and he saved them. He was under, you know, see they were killing, 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 killing. In Bobby Yar, this is the greatest, greatest grave in the world. Not only Jewish people there. There were right. the Russians. They did Italy, gypsies and, and all Dante. the... Anybody they didn't yeah. think was of the Aryan yeah. race. Yes. Yeah, and this was... He was very close. How do you call it? It's not a big, you know, when you go to pray. The smaller ones, you call it... Different. Chapel? A chapel, thank mm-hmm. you. This fellow who was, the, you know, in charge of the chapel, how do you call him? A priest. The priest, priest yes, yeah. a Roman Catholic priest, yeah. So you can imagine... After, you know, everything, he was only wounded, lying under the dead, dead cave, in corpses. So at night, he crawled out. And what do you think? Probably they didn't have yet uh, over there the uh, electric wiring. Mm-hmm. Probably. I cannot, you know, tell you for sure. But he digged in himself, and he was, went to the chapel. He took him in the priest. And he took care of him, you know. Mm-hmm. And then after already he felt he's okay, he said, thank you, I am leaving, and I'll join the partisans. You know about the partisans. Right, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In geography, if you look it up, you will see from Poland tremendous, tremendous, um, you know, uh, trees, how do you call no, it? forest. Forest, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. One was even famous in the whole world. It was Pushta Białowieska. This is even mi- different like a jungle. The jungle completely is in a hot right, area. Right, hot area, yeah. But this is the biggest. And what do you think who came there to hunting? All Hitler's cronies came there. It's tremendous. Now, after the war, you know, I don't know half, I don't know how much the Russian took it. Right. Anyway, I'm going back. <laughs> right, I think I'm right. making you crazy. <laughs> no, you, you're not at all. The story I is I want to un- share unbelie- as much as I can. Uh, absolutely. And and the deal is you finally get discovered. Okay, your family gets discovered. That is yours, absolutely. You. Yeah. You, your, yeah. your family gets discovered. They find you in the attic. They get your dad and your brother and your mother. But you're in the... Um, you were, at that point, you and your mother were separated from your dad and your brother. I'll tell you how the story, how it is. Okay. Is it okay? You have time? Absolutely. Okay. You know, we had this hiding place under the bed. In, uh, in the ghetto, we had only one room. And luckily, that mama had something that she could even cook up something. And by the way, my brother, if he would have survived... He would be the, probably the greatest in Israel with Zionistic. What I tell you, when you see more anti Semitic, you know you have to finally get your own own country. Mm-hmm. And you know by right, Israel take take our you know uh, Christ. He was born. He was a Jew himself. Yes, he was. Think, but people don't know. Some of them, they don't want him to know. They only tell him that we kill them. You know, Christ and all the apostles were Jews. Yes, they all were. You know, if you would read how it became all of those, you know, groups later to, I cannot talk now, but yeah. <laughs> this is another thing. If you come sometimes to my house, I'll right. show you a lot of things. So anyway, what I want to tell you. This is when you were discovered. Yeah, okay. Because, and I tell you what happened. All this time I worked in the brush factory, okay? Mm-hmm. And then after they were bringing from difference, I told you it was a transit finally. They couldn't 
clean, clean up one time, kill all the Jews. So I remember from smaller towns, from ours, and another thing, in Poland, you didn't have stations and everything there. But our city had it because we are dealing, a railway station. We're dealing mm-hmm. you know, with the whole world. Matter of fact, I had two uh, uncles who well, they're dealing he, with uh, here in the United States, sure. in uh, Q- UK, and also Switzerland. Don't mention to me about Switzerland. I have a lot of things. Okay, go on. <laughs> so anyway, what I want to tell you how it, it how they did it, little, little by little. And uh, so some of them, they were sent to, my, to our, okay? Mm-hmm. And then they would take some right away to Tremblinka. Mm-hmm. And the rest, if, they, if you left, if you didn't hide or something, they killed them. Then you call it Juden Rain. That means no more Jews. Okay? Right. Yeah. Right. And this is the way it was going on, going on. In 19, our, uh, our, um, they came in 1939. Okay? Right. Mm-hmm. And then I worked. And then finally, 1942, the, the ghetto. And then little by little, the ghetto still open. And I want to tell you, because it's very important. My daddy had a friend who they they worked. I mean, together. I mean, together in the business. And he was a wonderful guy. When the when they came in, the Germans, when the war started, he said to my daddy, "I'm going back to my hometown. It was a little. Uh, um, it's not was a town, but the smallest." Um, no village. Village, thank you, thank you. I go back to my village where I was. He felt he'll be more safe. And what do you think? Little by little, the ghetto was smaller and smaller, but there was still an open ghetto that you could come in and go. And one day, I shall never forget, he came walking from his village and he said, when he came in, he said, please close the door. I have a message to you. What do you think? His village was very close from Tremblinka. He said, I came to warn you what really will happen when they come surrounding you, where you go. And exactly he told us how. And that's exactly so the way So we believed them up. right mm-hmm. away, yes. This helped me to sur- to survive, and I tell you why. But my mama right away gave us anything. If they catch caught us or something, we still was thinking maybe you, we can bribe him. You know what I mean? Sure. All kind of, you remember? Sure. You know what I mean? So we all had something, you know. And I had uh, I was wearing boots, and I had inside always the uh, you know someone. So when the day came, in our ghetto, we had six, um, that means uh, six deportations. We, me and my mom, we went to the fifth, before the last one was sixth, okay. When they took us out from the hiding, they came with German shepherds. So anyway, why I'm going to tell you that this man helped me with my family to be almost to the end, you know. Mm-hmm. But my brother was also very lucky, also a friend for my daddy's, that his son was an engineer in measuring the, you know. An so he took mm-hmm. him in. There were not Jewish boys in them. Him and another fellow, yeah. And this saved us a lot because he had a permit to come into the ghetto. He used to bring us some extra food, you know what I mean? What can I tell you? He was a hero. And we had an underground in the ghetto. Right. My right. brother was in the underground sure. too. And I know exactly right. everything. And I tell you, one day, that he was, you know, we had some Jewish police, not because they wanted they came you heard your One day, we killed one in the ghetto. 
she was an informer, you know. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, we couldn't do this to a German. If not, they would come and burn us alive. Yeah, they, would have, me? they yeah. would have killed but, a lot yeah, of people yes. in retaliation. They were wondering, yes. sure, who has had to have some ammunition right. because we were preparing to run away to to the forest with the, you know. Right. Yeah. But they to but fight. They, right. But then they they catch you. Right. They caught you. But they did not catch your sister. Yeah. One moment. Yeah. Sure. I'll tell you all about. My sister did was younger. Okay. Like two. We all three. My my. My brother was the oldest. He was 1923 May. Why I remember May? Because it was May the third when they took us up. Anyway, he was always out of the ghetto, you know, since then. So we knew that he will make it. And he had even, uh, how do you call it, to show it that he's not Jewish. Papers. But, yeah, but a man was very difficult. All they had to do, you know, you, you follow me? Mm -hmm. Women, if you would see and read what our women did and thought, the people will never, never believe it because it was much, you know, put on blonde. It's not when they put the Jew looks like this. No, we have a lot of you go to Israel, you wouldn't believe it. This is just. You know, people who look a lot like the Germans thought you <laughs> yeah. should look. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but women could do a better sure. job because mm -hmm. you follow me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, as a woman. And they did a tremendous under underwork, you know. Underground. Underground. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They saved so many. Anyway, what I want to tell you the next thing about when we went already when they sniffed us out, this is the reason we, we, we built this bunker after he told us. And I tried to tell others about it. But I want to tell you, people couldn't believe it. Oh, with so much to tell you. Anyway, I want to go on and tell you why he saved maybe my life. When we were already in the train, they put us in like herrings. You couldn't move. All jammed in the boxcars. Mm -hmm. It had only a small little window. In the winter, they put us on open trucks, okay? In the summer, it was just a small little window, and it had, you know, little wiring. Listen to this. When we were already knew our men, especially young men, they knew we were going already to a dead. We were... Every day through our, uh, you know, we had still the trains going through. We couldn't believe it, always in the same direction. You wouldn't believe it what he did in the beginning. He tried always not, you know, to, to stray it up. He took, in Germany, they had a lot of Jewish men who fought in the World War I, mm -hmm. all with medals, big people. They were the first one, what he told them, we're going to resettle you. And they believed, you know, we didn't know at that time. It's in the beginning. Uh -huh. And we were saying, our man was telling us, oh, my gosh, one was almost too late and was running to go back on the thing. And the people with the tits to Treblinka. And if you, Treblinka, you wouldn't believe it. They had, you know, made like it's not a, uh, they put it like a house and it's like a station they made right. it to look outside because several even non-Jews they didn't know they put anyway this is, was a luxurious train they put them on just people will never know what I have seen right. Yeah. anyway let's step up and tell you why he maybe saved my life we already knew what's happening in this when, I, uh, when they took us out from the hiding, they put us in the front of the building, okay? So my little sister was sitting here by the, by the wall in my daddy, and I was sitting with my mom a little farther. 
I shall never forget my little sister. She was a beautiful little girl. She started falling apart because we had assessment already among. We thought they would kill us right there. Mm-hmm. And she said, oh, they're going to kill me. It could be such a beautiful day. And, you know, so my father was sitting next to this opening, which you can open. It. I don't know how to, to tell you. Here is a fence, and there is a thing. There's that a you gate can... right there, yeah. When he put it like this, one moment, he pushed her in there, back. She hid it there. We had only one latrine, one. So she hid it under the door there. I, it's been too long to tell you everything. Yeah. And then suddenly they found more and more people in the hiding. They knew already the people hide. They had enough. So in one moment, he tells us to stand up. At that moment, my father passed, ran away. Okay? Mm-hmm. So we were praying, hoping after we me and my mom that my daddy and Manya was the name, make it. that he'll make it. But i tell you later. Anyway, when we marched already to the station, and like I told you, since we already knew we were going to our death, we knew. So suddenly, the, the train stopped. Or, or meanwhile, I want you to know, when the train goes very fast, our young men, a lot of men, had some already tools to open and jump. If you jump in the very first stage, you have a 99 cent, 100% survival. Because until he shoots you, I told you, on the top. Right, on the top, yeah, they you have follow the me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I had a friend that he said, he thought I'll be jumping and my mama will be jumping. And I knew my mama would jump. I said, Vovek, jump, jump. And he waited a little bit. And then the train, they stopped the train. And there is that moment we hear the shot. Shots. And my mama said to me, Sonia, Vovek is dead. And it was dead. So his father survived. He was a doctor. And his in his uh, uncle survived. Can you imagine? Because mm-hmm. he jumped right away. Right. Yeah. You never hear stories like this. No, <laughs> yeah? absolutely no, no. not. No. Okay. The next thing I want to tell you, you can imagine, suddenly we stopped. We didn't know why. So, and people were dying, left and prior. Children, baby, you can imagine religious life. Right. You can imagine. So I was standing on that body. I'll never forget I was short to reach to the little window and I managed to put my hand out and we didn't pass out the money because the the men who work there on the station, some of them they took the money, didn't give you. I was lucky. I gave him, he gave me a canteen with water. So you can imagine. So you can imagine when I got this and I took a few sips Mm -hmm. and then I want to give it to my mama. Till today, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure because everybody wants. Started to grab it. Yeah. And we still f- suddenly we felt that the rain, I mean, the train was railed, railing. We didn't realize. You know why? Mm. We found out. There were so many trains standing, and they couldn't kill the people fast enough. Right, right. They had, they had a problem. So too, our right. train was a raid to Madonna. You heard about Madonna? Yeah, McDonough was the first uh, first prison or the Listen, first uh, concentration Listen, it was horrible, yes. horrible. Yeah. Listen, like I say, I can sit hours, not only hours, weeks to tell you what happened. Oh, so yes. this is what I just want to tell you. 
what I can tell you, the worst horrible death is from water, not to have water. Yeah. I have seen all kinds of deaths. But Dehydration. Is, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So finally we arrived in Maidanek. Maidanek, he was the camp. It was a dead camp. And I tell you, I don't want to tell you more about how many. Travniki was right there. People paid money because they told them, oh, we're going to take to, you know, another factory toward the brushes. And people, a lot of them, what I remember, and we were kind of, oh, I said, you know, we envy them. And what do you think? When we arrived, we got the news that Travniki, as soon as they came, they put them to the guest chambers. Right. Right. They weren't no, using them for work it's a, at all. unbelievable. No one will know. That's what I'm a little disappointed. See, still there, you know. Yeah, right. And you are, and, and your son has always said, she's the witness who will never forget. That's right. For, from and the, I tell you, right. wow, you wouldn't believe it. When we came in to, you know. Uh, Madonna. Madonna. They still selected people for the first time. We finally knew the right is to go to the camp, and left, you go to the guest chamber, and you keep the people right there. There are so many already dead people inside. Mm -hmm. So me and my mom, my mama was only 43 years old. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And then they, so those went to, re, and we worked, we came there, okay? We had to go through a, you know, sauna, they call it, and take away everything what you was wearing. And then they were signed to barracks, okay? So I was lucky still to be with my mama in the same barrack. If not my mom, I wouldn't have survived in, uh, in uh, is it too long for you I speak to? No, uh-uh. Yeah? Right. You see, my Regina was wrong. I well, said, <laughs> yes, she was well, completely wrong. She said, Mama, they want to only know here what happened. Well, we do want to know yeah, about Kansas yeah, City we'll as well. Yeah, we'll come to it, yeah. Sure. So I, I will not keep you too long, <laughs> but I want you to give you more or less to see. Some of the history, yeah, some, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, when we arrived there, they did not have any toilets. No latrines. Digged out holes. Yeah. So you can imagine. Yeah. We were carrying the fetus to the fields. Yeah, and okay. then spreading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spread it in the fields. If there was one that I was uh, uh, as a witness, you know, against her, late, you know, the... It's on the end, I'll tell you, if right. it will be time. <laughs> and right. not, you have to come back. Anyway, what I want to tell you, there was a horrible case. Women were dying every day. If, like I say, thanks to my mom, this was, you call it, uh, you go constantly, constantly with blood already. How do you call it, that illness? And women were dying from right and left. Mm -hmm. But thanks to my, because you don't want to eat, just drink, drink. And my mama managed, we still have in the beginning some Polish uh, Christian ladies, what well, they sent them from there to, to the Germany. They worked in the farms, you right. know what I mean? And, and one was from my hometown, a Jewish lady. But we, she already was careful, you know, we would they never, know. never in our life mm -hmm. to see, but we were happy for her. Anyway, to make the story short, there was one, especially we called her the Schlager. She was worse, a woman, you would think can be so sadistic, I would never believe in my life. She was worse than a sadist. Mm. She was, and I have her on the picture. She was um, always have three German shepherds and a whip. If you didn't, many times, if you didn't, if you would do anything what they want you to do, you will not make it. You had to always, my sixth sense, 
I used my sixth sense, otherwise I wouldn't be here. I'll right. be honest with right. you. You yeah. just knew what you couldn't yes. do. Yes, yes. God, I think if meant to be, something comes. And I used it, otherwise right. I wouldn't right. be here. You don't know what I went through. Right. Anyway, what I want to tell you, so thanks to my mom, I made it. Because she was exchanging something with the girls, you know. Anyway, then you can imagine, for example, sometimes they needed that many, 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 and then as often you could hide it, not to do what they want you, you had a better to survive. But when we do it, we only hide it under those barracks, mm -hmm. especially if she caught you. Do you know what she did? Well, she probably tried to kill you. <laughs> Worse. Mm. She drowned you in those fitties. Oh, gosh. In the latrines. You can imagine. Yeah. After the war, you know, three, uh, I was a witness about it. It's too long to tell you about right, it anyway. Right, right. But uh, they put them, yeah. I was... Um, right, you, you were a witness three, to all this. It yeah. came two from the FBI one day and locked my door. And then they came because, do you know how she came to the United States? I'll tell you. One day, one of our g girls who were in them goes to a... Uh, Brooklyn, New York, in a bakery. And who is standing, standing? Her. They were smart. They didn't do anything. They went straight to the FBI. And the FBI was telling me. Yeah. She married yeah. a GI. Oh, gosh. Our boys. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I can tell you that a lot of them came like this. But she happened to be discovered one from us. Okay? Yeah, right. Exactly, yeah. So you survive. Majonic, uh, Auschwitz, Birkenau, and also Bergen Belsen. Now we're getting, we're getting to. I the, was shot in the Bergen Belsen right, in the day of liberation, you know. Right, right. It, well, and the deal is so, did you know any time before, how long did you, before you got an inkling that the English were close, the Allies were close, and that the Germans were starting to lose the war? Did you have any idea until they drove up and there they were? Or did was there some indication that the war is I tell close you, to an end? I tell you. We already heard from far, far kind of bombing, but we didn't know it. One day, I was very lucky. I fell in a group, which I worked in a, it's a barn, okay? Mm -hmm. And we were peeling like rutabakers or the, no potatoes. <laughs> they say, but they know. This was specially for any. Anyway, and there was one latrine in the back. In this special day, we all in across from us was the men's camp. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, you don't know what hunger can do. You know how do you call it? Rage. Uh, men held it to take out the levers. Yeah. But you cannot blame those. You don't know. Mostly where they were, they were rather Russian soldiers mm -hmm. fell in. You know they right. were there. Yeah. And then in the front, from the barn, was a big, you know, hop, 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 those rudabeggers were there. And believe it or not, this day, I had a feeling, we all, girl, I was sitting with, a, we had women from all over Europe, from France, and even, you wouldn't believe it, from Greece. Mm -hmm. None of them made it. I saw when they were going to me. I don't know what to tell you first. Anyway... So why this day we knew there are not many of the SS came in in the SS women. We felt something in the air. There is something quiet. Something different. So something different. So me, very, you know, I went out to the latrine. I said there was an open thing that I can see more. And sure enough, I see already here the tanks, tanks, tanks coming. You can feel it. And I was so excited. I wish I would stay there. So I want to share it with the girls. And meanwhile, the, the men also start seeing it. So where, did the, where is the hungry men who are running? To the kitchen, right. okay? Mm -hmm. They're running not only kitchen, 
grabbing one of those rutabagas, even with the dirt, say it. And just eat it, yeah, because yeah. they're starving. You don't yeah. know if nobody. Right. And so listen, they still have a guard in the front watching the rutabaga. He sees already, I, I cannot, I cannot till today understand. He starts shooting, and I was trying to go back. And the bullet came in here, came out through here, and then two girls just lightly wounded. And I tell you, it's meant to be because if he would shot me farther, I wouldn't make it. Yeah, right. So it. Yeah, so this you, way, you have to feel... the bullet went through. Right. I didn't know what it was. Suddenly, I feel blood coming from my mouth. And I tell you, sir, I was still... I was... The, the, the amazing... The, the blood, I didn't right. want to out. I said, maybe I'll live a little long. I right. don't know. <laughs> right. The, the, the amazing thing is you survive all this time, and you're going to be oh, liberated that's what on I that said. day. I was talking to <laughs> Almighty... After what I went through, and now, so listen to this. One of the Russian men, I was, you know, already took me out outside because they're coming. Through the window, he said in Russian, which I understood, before you die, he said to me, look up and you'll see the liberation. And I saw what was his name. Uh, he was in charge in in. Uh, well, if it was Kramer, the, I think Kramer. Yeah, okay. I saw them all, the soldiers, and not only the soldiers, the women, all the cis women. I have them on a picture. Till today, I can tell you every, every because they were from Majdanek. They went with me later to Auschwitz Birkenau, Archers. and then to Bergebel. The same faces. Yeah. 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 What can I tell you? Yeah. So, yeah. so you're liberated there, and then who you were saved, uh, obviously by a doctor. You yeah. Were listen. Taken care of. So yeah. took they took me out. They took all the wounded out. In this, it was cool, cool in you know, May. I was no, I was liberated in um, uh, April 15. Oh gosh. Yeah. April yeah. 15. So they put me on the ground like with the others, and what do you think? The first state from the English we got. They didn't know. They were so, they didn't know what to do with the camp because it was all with typhus. Right. And typhus was killing us thousands and thousands. Even now the, uh, what is her name? Um, there is a book now. She she died in Auschwitz-Birkenau. Later I find out. Frank, Annie Frank. And Frank, and Frank mm -hmm. died there. In, uh, yeah. Right. But she came much later. Anyway, about her, I want you to know the true story. Now pick up the book. Her friend who survived, she tells the truth because some trying already putting on lies about mm -hmm. it. This mm -hmm. is a book by that high. I just got it. One of my, you know, client used to, and he brought it with his wife, came right. Sonia. This is the true story. It's a book like this. Anyway, what I want to tell you, the next thing, like I say, when I talk to the Almighty, now, after this, I have to die. So I still, it was very, after they put us out, they didn't know what to do with us. Mm -hmm. So I'll never forget, they put us in one barrack who was empty, and we were lying all night on the on the floor, not a real floor, you know what I mean? Right, on the dirt. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And some others. And then the next day, because do you know on the end, they burned the whole, you know, Bergen Belden was burned to the ground. Right, you know, it was yeah, bombed. Mm -hmm. Because they... They are scared to, to, you know, it was horrible. And by the way, if I wouldn't have typhus when I was in the ghetto, me and my brother, because you had already telling you the Germans, they're scared too to get it. If you will not, if you have in the family who has typhus, you have to report. If not, we'll kill them. So naturally... So me and my brother, we didn't have a hospital. It's interesting for doctors to hear. Mm -hmm. Only water, that's all what we had. And mama, my mama even, 
<laughs> I don't know. She paid a little money to the fellow to not to cut my hair, her beautiful hair. But she's wrong. After so many, when I made it, it's coming out anyway. So me and my brother made it. That helped me in a very big, big way to survive. Survive the whole time. Many times I was asking. People are dying around me every time. You could pick up there even the, the foot on, you know. Some would even change the shoe. I couldn't do it, take off the shoes. We had, you know, only from wooden shoes, you know. Yeah. And then when it came the winter, you know, by the death march. Did oh, you hear? yes, absolutely. March of Camp Camp and just have you march. die. Yes. It is really unbelievable. Now when I close my eyes, how the human being is stronger than, a, than iron. Of course, I was young, okay? Right. And another thing is I want to point it out to you. We had, like I say, from friends, Belgian, all over. But the pole, yeah, it was very easy to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. around, uh, around fall, we had every day women, all you had to do, put one, two finger on the electric, that's it. On the electric fence. Yeah. That's right. I, yeah. You know, sure. they were heroes on one day, did, and I, but I refused. Yeah. Inside me, I said, I'm going to fight to the last. Yeah, and, and you and did. And I fought it. Okay, so the war's, the war's over. You've been wounded. Now you're getting back to, uh, you know, health a little bit. And then how how did you get to First United I was in a hospital, okay? Okay. But until I was a, you know, I could walk out. Right. When I walked out, I'll never forget because the, all the girls, they thought I'm not, didn't make it. And I finally, when I, my first walk out, you can imagine, you don't know anybody anymore. You know, you always like to stick with from you, your country. The languages were different. Mm -hmm. I spoke a little French because I worked with them too. Anyway, and uh, so the Polish, we were much stronger in a way. The climate was the same. We could take the cold winters. We had winters sometimes, but that high snow, you know, mm -hmm. that when they're already changing your uh, clothes to the lousing, you could stay for hours out, not in the, in the usually lantern fall, twice or how, how often to take to the lousing to your, to everything, you know. And we had to wait until went through this. Uh, the the lousing. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. You can imagine, all naked, we stand all were girls, and then they put you again they what throw to the wear. Powder what, on yeah, you. Yes. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the winter, if was a, a coat and it had a lining, they'll tear out the lining. You can, I cannot tell you more. You don't have anything, not even socks, anything. Right. I really don't know, but you know, we walked in the winter in the assessment, and you could see blood, blood on the snow. Yeah, from the feet. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead, you know, what yeah, you want and, to know. And so after you get out of the hospital, okay, and then now they're going to, now you're going to want, where do you want to go? Okay. okay. So. Yeah, when so I went how, out of the hospital, listen, yeah, it's a good question. And so said, and so then, suddenly I hear from one barrack, Sonia, Sonia, they all thought, she thought it's not a, <laughs> you know, they thought I'm dead. She wasn't that time when this happened. Mm -hmm. She came out with her friend, and from then on, her friend was born in Krakow. She was about 15 years older. She spoke already like eight, ten languages, mm -hmm. you can imagine. This so, was her major. So you have the English she and spoke the Americans English, coming, yes. Yeah. Through her, thanks God, later she had a better, you know, she worked in a canteen, mm -hmm. you see? And so in the canteen, and then she had a better place to live mm -hmm. when the Germans, you know, had the, the higher officer's place. And then I... I was with them, and this was my first thing. That was your first uh, bit yeah, of freedom right, after you got right. out of the concentration. And after right. this, later on, 
they turned, you know, the English still were helping us, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know, people don't never know how many we lost because they rationed us, okay? I was in the hospital, so I was safe, you know, anyway. But you can imagine, and they were telling all of us, please, not that we want to give you more food, but it's just like a baby, you know, if you don't eat, Right. You, you like just this. have to do yeah, a yeah. little. You very, can't stuff yourself. Very great. Yes. Correct. Right. Right. You, are, right. you are smart. And say that a lot of them, a lot of them died. Yeah. yeah. They just couldn't bring them back. They yeah. just weren't yeah. strong enough yeah. to bring them back. And another thing I want to tell you, when I went to the hospital, um, we were, I think, about, let's see, two, about four of us, yeah, in this uh, And uh, they were... V like I say, very good to us. And uh, then I kind of finally find out about why I survived, that I, the typhus, then you was uh, immune. The immune system, yeah. I wish, I yeah, wish this one was immune, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they're working now in Israel to, for the immunity for this one. Anyway, what else can I tell? Right. I was just going to wonder how you got from the hospital in, in getting better to the United States. Oh, okay. How did you end yeah, up here? I'll tell you one moment. So now, since I already have these two girls, and uh, everybody was looking already from someone from your hometown. So if you went to the um, place where they kept all the, uh, how do you call it, the office, was all our all names, names, our right. names, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So I got to know a few uh, from her hometown, uh, you know, some young men, you know, boys, I should say, and we got already acquainted, and it was very different, okay? And then one day comes a fellow who I didn't know if anybody survived, only was dreaming who survived. I thought maybe my brother, mm -hmm. because he had the papers and so on. And then I forgot to tell you, when my brother was or could be outside and inside from the ghetto, he met a farmer, and he said, it's a very important thing for you. And he asked him, because he knew already it's getting closer mm -hmm. to, to the end. He asked him, listen, I have a little sister she was beautiful, very nice. She's younger, but two and a half years. So he asked him, listen, I will come every week and pay you if you can save her. He said, sure, I'll take her in. So she was with them, I don't know how long. They took her even when they went to pray to the, uh, you know. And uh, until, I want to tell you, my brother and my father, when they already saw the end is coming, they hide it in a building. Of course, they needed some food. Mm -hmm. This was a young man that I still remember. It was horrible for my sister to tell me this later. He gave him out. Mm -hmm. They were planning there to stay and then to go to the escape, get to the, escape the, woods, to the, the forest, forest, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. to him. Yeah. They didn't make it. Yeah. They came, took him out. It was not even anymore a place where to bury him inside. Right. So I tell you, they even built our cemetery, it was a very large cemetery, old cemetery, the new cemetery. They built homes. On top of them? Yes. On top of the grave. Yes. Mm -hmm. Until finally later, the, uh, our, the, um, you know, they, they discovered it. They, they, yeah. they start, the, you know, the, um, who was the president from Poland, whatever, stopped this because from all over they started not talking, saying up, right. talking up. Right. You know, I don't know if you know, even after, you probably read, see the movie, what he made, uh, 
um, sinless, sinless list. list. Mm-hmm. I've seen sinless list. Do you remember on the end the one the Russian on the on the horse? And he said, "Where are you going? They don't want you." It was true, even in the fighting among the Paris the Paris Partisans. yeah, mm-hmm. there was one that didn't. They called themselves. Uh, um, it will come to me. Um, they were fighting, and they were Polish Christians, okay? Not allowing any Jew to join his air group. Right. Only some women survived there, and a couple men, I know. So you can imagine how they had to be careful. Yes, right. And so what right. do you think? If you read back now a book, Fighting Back, I didn't realize myself what they did. They planned not to have any Jew coming back to Poland. You yeah. know about yeah, that? Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know. Oh, yeah. So you can imagine. So, so you really it, weren't going to go back to your country because of that situation. So how did you eventually get to the United States? Okay, tell you. So one day, this was already, they call it, uh, still on the English um, uh, how do you call those camps later, the open? Uh, oh, the... Um, you know, oh, yeah, yes. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. You, you have to then show up to another camp. They treat you a lot better, yeah. but you're still in a camp. No, yes. this is the English already, this after the English, liberation. Right. Yeah. yeah, this is after but liberation. But still you right. was, you know, you didn't know right. from anything. Right. And everybody wanted to go to the American zone. You know, that was the American zone, the English zone, and I think the French zone. Everybody want to go to a French zone because you knew it will be easier to go any place. Some went to Brazil, depends. Some, if you had a, a, a you know, a family, you know. But we came the right. It took long. Don't think that was easy to come no. here. Right. But we came legally. We didn't got a penny here from our government. No, we came through our. People, what well, they will go to you and say, listen, we need a sponsor, okay? Till today, I don't know who our sponsor was, you right. see? Yes. And told them, listen, you will not have, if you're a sponsor, you have to take care of them, you know? He said, we will take, don't worry, just put the ration and we'll bring them, and we, and it was the way, that way too, okay? And they, that's the reason I'm telling you. We came because this is still, even now, the best country in the world. Oh, yes. Even with our, you know, problems, too. We do That's, have problems. Yeah, sure. everybody wants to come. Mm. But not like this. You know, I'm talking. Right, I know. You know, you mm-hmm. follow me. I got no, you. No, no, no. We need people. You take this, you know, for example, um, Hollywood. Every one of them could be a sponsor and bring the right people. Mm-hmm. We need people, sure, but the right people. Right. Right. So, I, so you get a sponsor, correct? Through our organization. Right. I did, we didn't know. You have who, no idea who they Today, were. I don't know right. who the sponsor. Right. Okay. This is the way we came here. Okay. Right. So you came but, to. El- but I, one moment. Go ahead. But my husband's family came here in 1946. So naturally, they always try to put the families together. When I, when we came. In 1948, okay, and I already had my little boy was nine months old, mm-hmm. and we came with Marine Flesher. I'll never forget. This was a army ship, you know. Right. Yeah. So the men had to go under down, and the women and children up. You know. Anyway, to make the story short, when he came in, you can imagine, this is the first time I met a black person. Mm-hmm. Because in the geography, in the history, we learned, we knew. But this was the first time that I am. And I read also, uh, that means uh, here, that's a book which we had to read about Hatavuya uh, Toma. How is that in English? Uh, Tom's, Tom's Cabin. Oh, oh to- yeah. Uncle Tom's Oh, so Uncle I Tom's knew cabin, already yeah. a little the history. right. right. And then before I came to the United States, I I had a tutor teach me a little bit English. Of English, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then how we came, 
like I already told you. Yeah, right. You. You, you arrive in New York, right? Yes, Did yes. you arrive at Ellis well, Island? I was in New, New York, York. Mm-hmm. and then I had something uh, itching or something. We stayed a little longer. And, you know, yeah, just stay in yeah, isolation yeah. And for then while, automatically yeah. they send us where the family is because my husband's from 10 children, four survive, two sisters and let's see, two sisters and a brother, one brother, yeah, one brother, of course, in my husband, and my husband, mm-hmm. four, four survived from 10 people, okay? Right. Yeah, but when it came already the, uh, that you can came, come here, the visa, my husband, you know, he was in love with me, and I had to wait, you know. So we waited until we went but we had to go through x-rays and everything the way it's supposed to be. My husband had something probably in the, in the camps, something he went, he probably didn't even know. He right. made it. Right. It left a white spot. We call it in Polish, uh, you know, some. Anyway, do you know they had to put him on from eight months? If you come back, and this will be still there, that means it's okay. But if not, we would have to stay in Germany. Oh, God. Yeah, you yeah, can okay. imagine, yeah. yeah. But so, uh, thanks God, you know, then yeah. we came here. You came so, here, and then how did you get from New York to Kansas City? Oh, when we came here, automatically, you go to New York. I still remember a Broadway uh, hotel. <laughs> still, I remember, <laughs> I don't remember. I remember Broadway Hotel, and they put us up on the tenth floor. You can imagine. I never, never <laughs> come from a what small a difference. Time. Yeah, <laughs> I was scared every time. I was thinking, and I would say to my husband, "Oh my God, if it's a fire, what won't be with us?" <laughs> it's a kind of fear, you know. Sure. So anyway, in the meanwhile, I tell you, my husband's uh, family. They sent them to Kansas City. Okay. So this automatically. You went to Kansas City. That's right. right. Yeah. And so you get here and what, and I know you, your husband who was also a survivor of the Holocaust, right? Yeah. And he, he came from the Western part. Right. And he, and he was a tailor, correct? I tell you, he really was um, working on uh, leather for men, you know, when you go to... Uh, you know, those leather things, what you carry when you are a, a businessman. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, a, okay. a leather bag. But mm-hmm. in the war, we knew, of course, like I say, remember, when they entered Poland, they annexed the western part, okay? They didn't have the Ukraines, what we had, okay? Right. So it was different. So anyway, he had an uncle who was a very famous tailor. He took him in because they needed right help. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. sure they did. And he taught him. He taught him. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Exactly. So, yeah. so you two meet, and you we get met, married. We met after <laughs> we came. I mean, uh, in Germany. Yes, yeah, when met the Germany. fellow came. That's right. I have to tell you how. When my um, one fellow who lived in the same housing in the ghetto. Mm-hmm. He survived from the whole family, and one sister survived. And uh, what do you think? He looked up for another sister. I knew she didn't, but he made an effort to come. Mm-hmm. And this was still no uh, no even borders yet. It was rally, right, you know, right, right in the beginning. And he came to look for the other sister. Right. And he looked up the list from his hometown, who survived, and he saw my name, and he was the first one coming telling me that my sister survived. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. My sister's story is unbelievable yes, how right. she survived. Right. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> right. So you get to the United States, and you and you get to come to Kansas City because of relatives of your husband's, yes, okay? Yes, yes, yes. He is now a tailor because uh, he was yes, apprenticed yes. Well, back I in tell Western Well, I Poland. tell you about yeah. him. He mm-hmm. was a wizard in Met. And um, so the beginning, you know, he, uh, let's say how it was it, he was working and then they finally there was a, 
a fellow who's a, a neighbor, and he suggested later, you know, there is a place in downtown that is uh, selling, you know, some clothes, not new, you know, before the right. war, you know. Sure. Every, yeah. Anyway, to make the story short, my husband, you know, stayed with him, but the one, the other one was smarter, and he got out. I don't know why I'm going into. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, later on, he started to go in the evenings to take some uh, real estate lessons because he was all good in Mehmet, and I wish he would have stayed there. But then comes somebody called us, oh, there is a place, somebody is retiring on Broadway, mm -hmm. and uh, first was the 8th Street went, 8th Street. And then the fellow was retiring, and uh, we took it over. Right. So my husband worked there, and I helped. And then he was better in English than me right away because I was staying with the baby, and we lived also in a, a basement. Right, and, this and you was, didn't see many this people. This was very hard on me right. Right. because at home we... Only based anyway, I'm not going anywhere. Sure. Yeah, I'm talking too much. I no, 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 you're fine. Yeah. And so, when you get here, you open John's Tailoring, right? Eventually, I don't think eventually, you did it right, right eventually away. Eventually, from Broadway, and he already started going down. Yes, okay, yeah, you know. he, he's had a little bit, he started with dementia a little bit, correct? Yeah, yeah, but he had so to first, shop. First, was a how do you call it when people trembled? Oh, um, Parkinson's Park disease. Uh -huh. He had Parkinson's. He was a very good-looking man, tall, always slim, and a wonderful, wonderful personality and goodness, and came from a very musical family. Mm -hmm. If his brother would have survived, he would be the greatest violinist in the world. Oh, wow. It's a long story. I cannot yeah. tell you. Yeah. He had even a Stradivarius. Not his father couldn't afford her even, but he did everything. They, they lost the mother very early. Mm -hmm. He did everything to send them to high school. Yeah, to educate them. Like friends. Mm -hmm. and, sure. yeah. and one time there was a professor. He said, you are ready that far, you know. Right, he's a genius. And he had this violin, how do you call it? Strat you know, the Stradivarius. Mm -hmm. You cannot get him for billions anymore. No. <laughs> That's right. So you can imagine he left in his will wow. to give him. And wow. then he got caught and worked in a, you know, also in a camp. Right. Yeah. And you know how they liked classic music. Yes, they love classic music. Yeah, exactly. 20th century. Don't forget. Yes. This is the highest, highest culture. Right. Exactly. This is what's all... It can happen again. Right. I'm be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. So because so, the propaganda people don't realize is the worst of the worst, right. and we have it now too. I'm right. sorry. I'm not going into. Any. But you have been very upfront and and working very very hard in high schools and colleges. You've even been to Lansing oh. Prison to I, to talk yeah. about this. Do you story. know about Sue Ellen? Yes. She's uh -huh. very famous. She, yes. We are like sisters. Yes, yeah. right. So I start going to the everywhere. Yes. You can imagine how it started. After you come out for this, you cannot talk about it. Right. Even our boys, I talk to the veterans. I had a connection with them because our boys only knew the truth, what was really because happening. Because they there. saw it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's too bad they pulled them out. Mm -hmm. And they send the young man, and what do you think? Yeah. Between me and you, Mary. Right. You know what I mean? You right. know. I cannot talk. <laughs> okay. No, exactly. this, but rightfully so, they had to come home. Right. They are the only ones, and we survivors knew exactly. Right. And I tell you, another hero in our lives, don't forget, was our General Eisenhower. Yep. I can tell you so many things, but I want Who to tell you when I president. start to speak. Mm -hmm. Because many times the people knew when they dying sometimes. And they will say to us, remember anyone who will make it, tell the world. Tell <laughs> the world, yeah. yeah. It took you a while to do that, though, didn't it? Sure. Yes. You cannot talk. Right. You call it now the guilt 
of survivors. Survivors' of guilt. Survivors' mm-hmm. guilt. Exactly. One day, sweetheart, I'm sitting in the kitchen. We didn't have any televisions, only the radio. And what do you think? Do you remember your, I don't know if you know history, the skinheads from Oh, Manger? sure. Absolutely. Bless you. Mm-hmm. Not everybody know. What do you think? Germany even was taking them, if you will say it openly, it's not true, it didn't mm-hmm. happen, they put them in jail. Mm-hmm. So what do you think, where do they come? They come to our country, we have the First Amendment, and they abused us. When I hear for the first time, first time, the denial, it came to me like a thunder to my mind. I said, Sonia, this is the reason you survived. This is your duty, your duty. And that's the way I started many, many years ago. And then later we have like seven, eight, and my Regina, my daughter, you met Regina? No, you never met No, her? I've not no. met no, My she wife could, has talked to Regina yeah, many times. To yeah. Anyway, she is already, I talked with her, is already by, oh my gosh, 13 years at least. So you can imagine I started going, they picked me up, and this I felt my duty right. whenever I, you know. And this is even now, all my life. I, this is the reason I didn't want to write a book, because... I felt, and it's true, you should see how many letters from the, at least I feel I accomplished a little tiny thing to give them more strength. Absolutely. Do you know in what was in the schoolings, uh, how do you call it, the bullings? The bullies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I changed a lot of them from the bullings. Yeah, you and did. And how many letters will never forget you, Sonia, as long we shall live. Some have problems at home too. Sure, you know? absolutely. And they became stronger on account right. of me. This is the only thing I'm happy. Okay. And and it it has it has really kept you so mentally yes. strong. And, yes. Yes. And and busy, yes. busy exactly. about exactly. that. Exactly. And even though you don't like, I won't say don't like to remember. Even though it's very hard to talk about some of this stuff. You know. For you to get it out to some other people that they understand what happened yeah. has to be a tremendous feeling yeah. for you. Because when I speak, I know I speak for them because they told us, they begged us. When I watched people hanging, our girls hanging, yes. and you had to watch it. I know it's already time going. I will not no, it, no, you're not. And, and you are the woman. She's a, <laughs> I as, was as not even said, prepared that I would be. <laughs> that's, because that's Regina okay. said, Mom. You've been they prepared. Want, oh, bless you. You've bless prepared, you. Bless you. <laughs> and talk a little bit about the Midwest um, Center. Center for the Holocaust Education as well. Yeah. I mm-hmm. still, I, I talk, I'll be speaking again there. Yeah. I'm not sitting. Anyway, um, first of all, you know, so many years I was in that shop, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. you worked in the shop, and then you took over the you shop after many your years? husband. You know how many years? We were in the Metcalf 38 years. Yeah, right. My husband passed away, it's already 39 years. Right, and it was it was the so only shop it, in Metcalf South left after Metcalf South went under. Yeah. John's was yes, still we there were the last forever. Yeah, you see the last it on the movie. One. Yes. yes. <laughs> so this is our... My uh, last, you know, uh, how to, relocation, and how it was really so sweet. The people owned from the Metcalf, they owned this building, okay? They took me in. The fellow, Werner, who was the um, policeman, he knew how I, I was crying almost. Mm-hmm. What will I do with myself? I had to. And he talked to this fellow because the owner already passed away and he was the manager. And he approached me, made her just come tomorrow, and I went with my daughter and shows me the place. Do you like it? I said, sure. It's a perfect place. I call it, you know, nicer, bigger than... Uh, than the Mecca Yes, shop, yes, yeah. I had two. Over there, I had only one little two, uh, you know, closet to write on. Right. And here I had two. And it was so always beautiful. If you would see my hand, 
It was a very nice place. Yes. The pictures and, and all. And, and I remember from the documentary when you're moving out of Metcalf South and everybody, they've got your sewing machines and they're taking thread and they've got the dresses and they're, they're doing everything. But the deal is all of a sudden you don't realize they're moving it. They're not selling it. They're moving it to just a different location. Exactly. Yes. So you can imagine we stayed eight years in here, the mm-hmm. last one. Last one, yeah. And you just but closed in May, correct? Yeah. Of 2023? I think end of May was Just it? a few Eight months May, ago. April, May. I think. Right. Yeah. Right. In meanwhile, we had a fellow who, you know, closed it up. But I tell you, most of the things went to, you know, museums. Yes, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. And then a lot of, I don't want to talk well, about it. Right. I know. It, 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 it hurts your heart to talk about it. I, I know it does. I don't I want to talk about the money. It's not important at all. It is only for me came the same time I fell. You can see this? Uh-huh. Constant same reminder. Time, it was too much for me. Sure it was. In the same time, my, my daughter calls me. I was six weeks in a rehab. And, um, and she told me that we have to move. Mm-hmm. It was overwhelming for me. Yeah, very, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And here so many people which they loved me and I still love them. They were so wonderful to me. It's absolutely. I'm going to tell you, really, Kansas City has really very special, good people, the way I see it. Even my sister came once from to visit, and then were the only ones she got to know my husband. He was already here. You know. Anyway, she said, Sonia, everybody, even they don't know me, in the smile, hello. And then we went we go into the stores. Now it's already different after the call. <laughs> <laughs> after where you had been going, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> she said, she said, Sonia, <laughs> that's a beautiful, beautiful place, because my um, her son was working for the um, Israeli embassy. Okay. Yeah. They came here for two years. They were here. And he had a very important, uh, you Job. know, yeah, mm-hmm. yes. And he, and now they in Israel still, but my sister, I lost my sister. It will be already a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Her surviving. Yes, after all, you that. would never right even believe what she went through. Yeah, but but and the amazing it, part was when you came here. Uh, you probably could have gone somewhere else. You might have been able to go back to Israel or, or somewhere else, but you have I, always stayed here. And I tell you why. My dream, we were, I come from a house, we were very Zionistic because of this, you know, sure. the hate to us. And, um, and I was always dreaming. I belong to a, where the younger from the schools, you know, t- uh, students, but in the school, they didn't know that I belonged to it. Okay, right. now you have to keep that kind of... And my brother especially was a very, very high. When the war started, my brother buried some very important things from this, you know. Mm-hmm. And I knew exactly where it was. But when I already... When I got the news that my sister survived... It's such a story you wouldn't believe yeah. it until, you know. I would never, she wouldn't recognize me, and I wouldn't recognize it. And she was telling me about it, but they built a road to the station, a new road, and I think this was in the it way. It was right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Listen, a lot of buried things were together. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, but, but you got here, came here, everybody in this city loves you. Okay, and I think that's uh, that was certain, uh, certainly important to you and your husband, the way you were accepted into this city. Of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, my husband was going every evening, I told you, mm-hmm. learning English, and I had to stay with the children. So he, right. he got up very nice. And then again, he was going to this. And the professor was uh, from Italy when it, the f- when something has to be, be we, sh- we call it in Yiddish and in, in, even in Hebrew, basher, that means have to be, to be. So she calls us about this place. And some would say to my husband, especially that fellow that uh, said to him, 
you are so good. Finish, finish, whatever, come finish it. Mm-hmm. You know how it is. I was very naive myself, and that's all. But he could have been a great, great, you know, uh, much easier life, you know, right. too, you know. Because, like I told you, he was a wizard of Yeah. He could be a, if he would have the education here, he was very, very smart. In right. Nabia. But, but everything really worked out for you, and where you are now and what you're doing now is just, just incredible. It's a new chapter for Yes, me. it is, and I a think set, it's wonderful. A set chapter, I right. tell you why. If I would have been younger, I would may try again. To right, but, I understand. But I had to be honest with myself, right. especially after that fall. Right, exactly. And this was my fault too, you know, and then right. I start blaming it. Right. Anyway, to make the story short, I try to live with each day at a time. Yeah. You probably saw in the obituaries about Jack Mandelbaum. Uh huh. Did you know him? I did not know him, no. No, I didn't. I spoke to him a few weeks ago. He was, um, that's, he was a very, very yeah. He was, he was a good man. Yeah. Yeah, well, from what I gather from you and everything I've read you about know, you and I've and I've I've seen the thank, documentary yeah, everything thank about you. you your and, hate, and the hate hope. you could have had. You would not be sitting here if you had just lived with that hate instead of <laughs> forgiving. And I know you're one, the one saying you always have that I just loved that I took from this is that forgiveness has borders. And I thought that was so, yeah. that's so compelling. But you me, understand but how I, I said understand, it. I understand, yes. When they ask me, how can you talk about yes. love? What you have mm-hmm. went through, but I said not hate. And I explained to them, I shall never forget. Do you know Adam from the resurrection, the biggest uh, Oh, yeah, the Church, Church of the Resurrection, yeah. yes. Here, he spent now a few pages about me. I know him. Because of this, I had two people, customers, and they were, uh, you know, uh, debating, I don't know how often, about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And I used to go with them very often to have dinner. So one day, when they had this uh, mm-hmm. subject, they told them how I feel. And then he got very eager and understood me right mm-hmm. away. So he came, made a 90 minutes uh, a film. Then he was showing it in his uh, thing. At the core Church yeah. of Resurrection. And yeah. I tell you how I did it, how I told the, the, my students, if he was smart or whatever. I said, listen, I shall never forget. I shall never forgive, but I'll never hate because... First of all, forgiveness is very, very important, but it has some borders. Yes, Be realistic. Yes. Even he understood this. It has borders, but hate, no. I will never hate. If, if I hate, I ruin myself and mm-hmm. I become a hater myself. Yes. And they get it. Well, there you but are. you know, when I say forgiveness, who am I to say I would be ashamed for those people to say, who am I to forgive? I said, this has to come from a higher place. Well, let me tell you this. I got it. In in closing, I just say this, okay? Okay. You are a treasure. We love you here. And uh, you're one of the reasons there's uh, just something. I can't just say Please stop by. God bless. Okay. God bless you. I am really, I feel I'm just a human being like anybody else, you know. I only have this responsibility in me, what sits in me, that I speak for them, or they couldn't make it. What I have seen, just baby seeing going into the... It's impossible. Right. Never stop. Okay, we love you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now I'm only praying. I stay day by day. I pray in the morning. I pray in the evening. For everybody, for the whole world, to love, not we, hate. We need it. But, you know. Perfect. We're now going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I Perfect. can take this off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs>